if you enjoy a story with a surprise ending, then you'll enjoy The Great Phone Crisis. It has a really big surprise ending. <laughs> I slay myself. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. From the principal's office. Cell phones are the cause of way too much work for school principals. I realize the arguments for cell phones, safety, communications, and such, but I'll never be able to justify the distraction. According to Google, the student's cell phone represents self-sufficiency. Of course, this self-sufficiency comes as the student is tethered electronically to their parents, friends, and the cold, cruel world 24 hours a day. It's a wonder people my age survived. As the cell phone has become more and more commonplace with students, even students as young as the third grade bring them to school every day. Every school has policies regarding cell phones. Some schools let students do what they want with their phones. Others have a complete prohibition. Most land somewhere in the middle where fines, device removal, and discipline attempt to provide a structure for at-school student phone usage. My question is, how do you react to the student who is busted using their cell phone and their excuse is, I had to answer it, it was my mother? Can you say helicopter parents? Even pointing out the fact students may use the office phones doesn't calm the coming tirade. By the parent. Apparently, there's a universally known rule that using the phone to contact a parent anytime, any place, comes with an automatic get out of jail free card. Yeah, I didn't know either. I love my job. I love my job. I love my job. I know it sounds simple. A student violates a cell phone policy and the cell phone is confiscated, then given to a parent or returned to the student at the end of the day. Well, some of the wildest encounters in this principal's office have been the result of a device removal and a subsequent meltdown, losing their mind, crying, screaming, and pitching a fit from being separated from their precious iPhone. The addiction is real. Additionally, it doesn't help that nearly every adult in this school, especially the younger ones, is walking around staring at a phone. Is this not the best example of do as I say, not as I do? The benefits of cell phones at school cannot be denied. They are numerous. Googling answers to tests, texting during class, taking pictures of classmates in the dressing room, bullying, and the list goes on. I wish I knew how much time I've spent chasing problems that center around cell phones. And don't get me started about cell phones that are stolen. I've spent hours looking at security video for stolen phones, with the victim certain that they knew who took it, only to discover the phone was left on the bus or at home that day. I'm sorry, enough of the rant. Now, for today's story. My school's cell phone policy directed each teacher to confiscate cell phones that were being used without permission during class by a student. It was up to the teacher's discretion if they returned the phone to the student at the end of class or turned it into my office, where it became my responsibility. On this day, little Johnny is sitting in his assigned seat during geometry class. His attention is clearly somewhere else. As the teacher, Mr. Smith, is presenting his lesson, he looks up and surveys his students. He notices two things. First, little Johnny is not paying any attention to what is going on around him, but instead, he's looking down at his lap. And second, little Mary, sitting in the back of class, and who is not a fan of little Johnny, is quietly trying to get Mr. Smith's attention while at the same time pointing at, or in student slang, narking out little Johnny. Mr. Smith stops lecturing and stares, never taking his eyes off little Johnny. His mind races at the endless bad possibilities of what a teenage boy might be doing in his lap. In his mind, for about three seconds, Mr. Smith rehearses his excuses for the meeting with his principal, or what he might say when Fox News points a microphone in his face. Snapping out of it, and taking a breath, for he realized he had been holding his, Mr. Smith firmly says, Johnny! Every student in the class, brimming with anticipation, is now looking at little Johnny thinking, this should be good. As little Johnny's eyes meet Mr. Smith's, his cheeks turn bright crimson. Mr. Smith says, bring me your phone. In his mind, Mr. Smith prays his guess that the boy's playing with his phone is correct. If he's wrong, 
he needs to go back in his mind and revisit his Fox News interview. Bracing for what Mr. Smith expects to be a lesson-killing argument, he is more than a little surprised when little Johnny doesn't say a word, but slowly gets to his feet, holding his phone between his thumb and forefinger. At the very least, Fox News will have to wait for another day. Little Johnny slowly takes the walk of shame to the teacher's desk and holds out the offending device. Mr. Smith nods toward his desk, where little Johnny deposits his phone on top of a couple of textbooks, like it's next in line for some kind of Aztec sacrificial ritual. Mr. Smith watches, as much to the disappointment of little Johnny's classmates, little Johnny retreats slowly to his desk, without a word. Uplifted by the unexpected victory, Mr. Smith continues class. Things proceed predictably for several minutes until little Johnny's phone, sitting in the middle of Mr. Smith's desk, on top its textbook altar, buzzes once. Then the custom ringtone sings out at maximum volume. Will the man with the 12-inch penis please answer his phone? Will the man with the 12-inch penis please answer his phone? Can you say total classroom bedlam? A troop of howler monkeys couldn't have made more noise. The racket was so loud, other teachers left their rooms, entering the hallway to see what the fuss was about. Mr. Smith, doing his best to hide a smirk, calmly picks up the phone and cancels the call. Later in my office, Mr. Smith described the pandemonium that was his room for the remainder of that class period. I can only imagine. Mr. Smith also pointed out not once, not twice, but three times, he was the one that answered the phone. I had to call little Johnny's mother. Ugh, you can't make this stuff up.